¿Qué pasa, amigos? We're back with Prospecto número 2 on Telemundo. <laughs> Just kidding. We're, gonna, we're back as the crack dictates. <laughs> we are ready to jump into Prospect Di number 2 today. We're going Dion Kane. This might be a little lengthy because Jason has tiger paws everywhere and they're orange. It's kind of right. gross. We'll see what happens here. But to tease the... ESB. We know you want to hear about Equinemia St. Brown, but you need to hear about the upside of Deion Kane. So and the downside of Deion Kane. Right. It's coming at you. There's all of that. It's a tale of two stories here. Jekyll and Hyde here, huh? Yeah. Well, let's start with the combine. Oh, yeah. The combine. Right? So a yeah, little bit of a, discrepancies in heights and weights, depending on where you go. Uh, <laughs> there's a couple of different NFL on Clicks. ESPN and Sports Reference, you got him at 6'1", 190. On one of the Combine pages, he's 6'2", 202. I think that's the official weigh-in. Right. And then on another NFL uh, Combine page, he's six brought five. to you by the NFL at NFL.com, backslash <laughs> Combine Profiles, backslash Deion Kane. He's 6'5", 205, which is not accurate. What are they doing? I don't what know is, what What are you doing? doing? It doesn't even matter. They have so much money, and you're going to get people back. They could mess up like this, and it right. doesn't even matter. But they don't care about the details. No, they so don't care. Funny. I think it's 6'2", 202. 6'2", 202 is what we're going right. with. He was a, uh, a top five performer in the three cone with a sub seven seconds and a top five performer in the 40 with a 4'4", four, four, three. But he had a bad burst score, but... Two out of three. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Little He's little stupid. little mid midday meat. <laughs> midday you. meatloaf. So I mean, how can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meatloaf? Fast loaf? in a straight line and and solid in the three cone at six point seven one, which mm. is is nice solid to see. Solid three cone with old Dion Kane. You guys want to start with sixteen or seventeen? Mm. Let's uh, let's go sixteen. All right, so sixteen. You're 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 riding high. Your national champs. Mm. You got Deshaun Watson, one of the best quarterbacks going. You got <gasps> Wayne Gallman, who was a solid running back. And when you're watching Deion Kane, it's all you see is Gallman and Leggett and Mike Williams just crushing all sure. over the field. And those are all the guys that you lost into 17. Right? Well, wait, wait, wait. 2016, during the season, you got beat by Bama in the championship. So 2016, you're working your way to be the champs, right? Mm-mm. Huh. Yeah. 15, we lost Alabama. Correct. So tw the year of 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. During the season, right, you're right. not the champs. Right. Uh, you got beat in Bam by Bama. After the season, you're the champs. So 2017, you're riding high, but everybody knows you lost to Sean Watson. Right. I just, I you just lost all those guys. Put those dates well, for the correct. Kinda, yeah, okay. sure. You're, you're riding high after the season, but you, yes, you got you are the eventual champs. You got Gallman, mm -hmm. you got Leggett, you got Mike Williams, you got Deion Kane, you got a great defense, and you and most importantly, you got Deshaun Watson, and go. Right, so you're, you're seeing, when you watch the 16 film, it's, it's, it's a lot more fun to watch than the 17 film, obviously. Sure. <laughs> Deshaun Watson is Deshaun Watson, and Kelly Bryan is Kelly Bryan, probably not going to be the starter there next year. Um, it's fair. But it's just it's night and day, and when you and when you watch the sixteen film, it's it's great throws by Deshaun, great reads by Deshaun, dropping dimes. He's dropping dimes. He's throwing them away from the coverage, right. throwing he, him open, throwing him open, and all that good stuff. And obviously, you have all sorts of weapons around you. Clemson loses a ton of players after winning the national championship, um, and in seventeen, you know he's supposed to become the man. But uh, you see a lot of that. All the numbers go down. Pretty much all the numbers except for receptions go down. Right. Which, when you lose all these dudes and you lose Deshaun Watson, I think it's fair to say all the numbers for everyone are going to go down. Yeah. Right. Much it, more run-centric team in 17. Yeah. It, it, it didn't surprise anybody. But what I was a little bit surprising that just a ridiculous drop-off in yards per catch. Well, people will use it as a knock because, oh, you're supposed to be the man now and you're, you're this five-star recruit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you kind of flopped a little bit. But, I mean, what are you supposed to do? I mean, you're just not as good as you were. Well, like, yeah, well, I mean, that's 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 what I was about to get to. So, in 2016, Deion Kane's got only 38 catches for 724 yards at a 19.1 clip. That's like what James Washington type stuff. So, but again, like, you're, you're inflated because Deshaun Watson's throwing you open and Deshaun Watson's dropping dimes and Deshaun Watson is there's what he is. There's a lot of field to cover. And there's, ton, and there's lots of field to cover and there's tons of players to cover yeah. for the defense. The attention is split up, like you said. So in 2017, the attention's not as split up as much and you're definitely not fearing Kelly, Kelly Bryant like you were Deshaun Watson. Right. But if you could take that 
19 point. See, in 2016, Deshaun, uh, Deion Kane's coming back out of the doghouse where he gets suspended going into the postseason for the Clemson. Right. So he's he breaks into 2016 in a crowded, just te- the depth chart is just ridiculously strong for Clemson. Obviously led by Deshaun Watson, but if you so in 2017, Deshaun Watson's gone. But if you take those targets and catches, if you take those catches times a 19.1 average, then you got 1,100 yards this year. If Deshaun Watson was still there to throw him the ball, I know that's not fair because I just right. did. I took them. I took you know stats from two years and put them together. But you know, so you got a player who could be putting together numbers like the wide receivers put together that are talked about as a first round draft pick. But the real NFL executives are going to look at it and say just exactly what Casey just said. You lost to Sean Watson, and we understand that. Yeah, yeah well, you were supposed to be you'd the like man. To, you'd like to see uh, this guy who's, who's this, top, again, top five recruit or top five-star recruit dominate a little better, even with, with – I mean, it's still he's still a, an okay quarterback. It's not like you just – Yeah, it was first year, though. Right. I mean, but he's still playing on Clemson's schedule. You'd, and you'd it, still like to see him be a more dominant force in – playing ball out there so I could I can get the knock a little bit you, you were waiting to see what was going to happen and he didn't quite like I think if Mike Williams was put in this situation I think Mike Williams would have had a better year than Deion Kane had uh, that's fair I think that's fair I mean I think Mike Williams overall is a better wide receiver so I'll well, give yeah. you that for sure um but I mean it's just it's a it's a tale of two different guys like you said you know when you watch the 16 tape it's it's evident that this guy has all the skills necessary to succeed in the NFL. You know, maybe he's better suited to be a number two guy, maybe a Robin to someone's Batman, like like you said before, Case. Um, but I mean, I think he's also got a really high ceiling. It's just a matter of whether or not he can put it all together because he's got the speed and the playmaking ability that I mean, I personally really covet. I love this downfield receiver, and like the best part of his game is how he has that late separation at the top of a vertical route. Like, I don't know if yeah. it's just good stacking or it's the deep speed or maybe a combination combination of both, but it's it's super attractive. He just has a knack for pulling away at the last minute. Like, he just gains yeah. three to four to five That's, yards worth of separation. Those are basically my words in bold here, you know, my Deion Kane kind of category here. I, I don't believe he is a number one at the next level. I don't think he's a centerpiece for your offense. I think he could be a great number two for somebody. Again, like you said, a Robin to somebody's Batman. I don't think this is the guy you want to build your offense and feature around, but he's. I think he could be a really solid two. I don't like the fact that after every play where he makes that might have been like a decent play, he's got to get up and tell the defensive back about it. Yeah, like, yeah. he's always bit, in the dude's be face. Be a little bit more professional about your about like your game here. Like you're gonna and, like you've made a good catch before, a, and you're gonna make another one. You're a five star recruit. You're supposed to be one of the baddest dudes on the field, right? Yeah, and it didn't always pan out that way. Um, but what what again? Getting back to the bold letters here that I have is. I think he's really good at getting his hips on top of or in front of the defender. Like the, I think the kids like to call that stacking these days. Okay, <laughs> that's what the kids say. Um, and the 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 speed is very deceptive. It never looks like he's moving very fast. He's very fluid out there. It's and, effortless. And it's very effortless. And all of a sudden, like he's the ball's up in the air, and he's just the the next gear that he has is better than most people's. Right. You and the, the ball tracking skills to go with that next gear are outstanding, whether he's running under the ball or would, going to the ground to secure it. I think they're good. Coming back to the ball on an underthrown pass, like more times than not, he's yeah. reeling in that ball. Yeah. You'd like to see him be better be better in the uh, like ball tracking and, and going up and getting the ball. I mean, in, he'll track in, a ball. He, 50, he's, not, 50 balls. he's not necessarily going to go up and attack the ball. Right, he doesn't. He doesn't crush it in the air. He can. Right. I think he. I think he. I think he has better going up and attacking the ball aspects to his game than Equinemius does. Yeah. If I had to point something out like, but like if, that, but if it's he not the best, neck, it's if he not can get neck and neck with his guy, and you can put the ball in front of him. He's he's got this the the second gear or whatever gear, third, fourth, whatever gear you want right. to call it, is phenomenal. It's one of right. the best parts of his game. He can just turn it on and it looks effortless. Right. He's really good at getting off the ball. It, I, I think he's kind of hard to get your hands on and wrangle. Absolutely. He's big and physical. He's he's explosive off the line of scrimmage. He can cut. He he's got a various release moves yeah. he can wipe you in and out he can get the outside leverage or the quick, inside leverage yeah, quick releasing and going left and right and picking which side he wants to go it's to tough to get your hands on him and if balance, you do yeah. he can fight you off right because you didn't get a good clean jam on him right because you, his, his you first, see him beat the press his first little one two step off the line is, is hard to control and you're you're worried about you know there's plenty of tape where people he's getting beat beating people downfield especially yeah. in the 16 where you're putting that 19 
yards a catch kind of James Washington ask obviously much lower yardage totals and target totals but overall yeah one still, of those games in 16 with Deshaun it was the first play of the game it was like a 65 yard touchdown to Kane just blew the top off like yeah. you're saying crushed but Syracuse you I think it might have been yeah. Syracuse uh you mentioned that he's you Casey's not seeing this guy as a build your offense around this kind of receiver and um, a lot of people are making it out that there may be not necessarily even one that we can think of. But the of. ceiling is good. No, no, yeah, I'm just saying. But like even say, go to the big four receivers, a lot of the big time draft nicks of this community are saying that there might not even be a top that that guy that is that number one player eighty at the top of the wide receiver ranking. So the reason I say that is because against a, the Deion Kane as the world of the world here on average DLF rookie draft, he's going at about wide receiver 11 so in the rookie draft he's going to go farther down with the quarterbacks tight ends and running backs mixed in so just wide receiver 11 as an average off the board i feel like there's a lot of upside with Deion kane here is with the for your rookie draft just pulling him that's that's what i meant but you know there, there is a, there's some positive and negative here but i think that the Deion kane here going into your rookie draft is going to be a bit disrespected slash I think that the NFL draft is going to draft him higher than a lot of people think. I'm not calling him. I'm not saying he's going to be a second round pick or anything, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. When I watch the Deion Kane, he looks like a, to me, he looks like an NFL wide receiver. Oh, he definitely looks like an NFL receiver. Just not a, not a centerpiece. And, and I'm not as excited about him as some of these other guys. That's why I have those first five in front of him, And then probably he's probably near the back end of the 10 mm -hmm. for me. I you know I just I saw a lot of other guys do a lot of other things that I liked more than what I saw from Deion Kane. Now he's a good prospect and there's a good ceiling, which is why I'm in that's taking exactly. Him. That's right. what I'm trying. That's what I was trying to say. Like but, this, yes. the ceiling is farther out there than for for him than than players that I might that I will end up having ranked higher than him. And I was mentioning that with Christian Kirk earlier. The floor is so high on Christian Kirk. I'm ranking him really high because of that because it's safe. And the floor's kind of the floor is kind of low for Deion Kane, and so, and a lot of that is is to be determined and, and and landing spot, yada yada yada, all that good stuff. But I I think his ceiling is is pretty far up there. He needs to get 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 somewhere and and establish a, a, a strong work ethic and and maybe a little bit of a slight attitude change and get just like, get more business oriented. Just like I you think, said, every be, time he makes a big catch, that. he wants to tell the so, defensive back about which it. Which I'm fine with that. Like I you if you want to compete and and you worked hard and you did your thing and and you know and but, you don't know what that guy's saying to him either. Sure, you know. Good but point, I mean, but, it, but it's every time. It yeah. is. It's, it's very it's almost every time. So it's like maybe often. maybe the guy's saying something to him, but he probably said some shit to him. Right. 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 And like if the every time part is what stacks up to me like if you do it every once in a while or you get into a game where you're, you're this choppy and you get and that's just a one-time thing that's fine but i just as a as a teammate that's going to drain me. there's some big drops as a in teammate there as, well. as a coach that's going to drain me there's some big drops in there as well with Deion kane and some in some decent spots where you'd like to see him you know come 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 away with with some plays he's also made he makes some good plays he's he's obviously i don't want to kill this and it's a five-star recruit you can take that for what it was for what it is sure but i mean he was obviously a, a, a well-respected big prospect coming into here um and obviously they don't know he's paying out but he's paying it out just fine but you're this is to be expected like this you should be really good and i'm just not sure that he quite even really lived up to exactly where he should be at the right. college level so that's why i'm just a little bit more concerned about him at the next level well let's, let's like is he willing the, is he because he, he could be he should be maybe higher up this board but he's not right, because he didn't take adva full advantage and maybe do everything he could to establish himself as one of these better receivers good i like well, the, that the main question is does he have it all together between the ears right yeah so let's really let's let's get into these negatives here because i got some bullet points about Really, it was really and 2015. You got, and you got yeah. that inside information, Tiger love. Like, right. you're, you're nobody's tuned in more on the on the airwaves these days than you are with Clemson. So let's see what they let's see what you got over there. So, so Casey, you mentioned the drops. There are definitely some horrendous drops. So you're just like, what's going on, man? Like, and it makes you want to question his hands because overall, I think the hands are really strong and and sticky. But then he's, he just has lapse of mental focus. And he, and he tons of drops, man. That's like a huge knock on him. And I remember it. He used to get benched as a freshman because he's not he's dropping it, and you just like wanting to pull your hair out. Like, come on, man, catch the ball, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a focus thing. And like he was benched in his freshman year versus Miami, which they they classified as a 
Need, he needed an attitude adjustment, Uh oh. right, which he got all upset <laughs> about, but then just put his head down and kept working and, and, and got back on the field. Then he was suspended for both of those bowl games in uh, 2015 for failing the drug test. Um, he was suspended for both of those games. Um, he wanted to transfer. He wanted to get out, but his mom wouldn't let him transfer Clemson. Good. Mom made him stay. Like mama already. Right? So it's just, it's, it's, can he get past those? And that, that was all basically his freshman year. And you didn't really hear too, too much about him moving forward, right? He still struggled with drops, and he still struggle, struggles with, with uh, fa- uh, penalties, penalty mm-hmm. flags, a lot of yeah. false starts. A Mental lot of times mistakes. Focus. Right. It's Opposite focus. of Christian Kirk. Go exactly. ahead. Sorry. And, and you, you, go, you go to 17, and obviously the numbers, the numbers aren't great. But if you go back to 16, he's got that, that big average and 38, on, 38 catches for 724 yards and a 19 point. One average and nine catches is, is a solid day, but that whole offense was also eating. Right. Like, he's... Tearing it up. Like, Artavis Scott had 76 receptions, 618, 614 yards, and, you know, not a, not a ton of touchdowns, but five, which isn't terrible. Um, Leggett averaged 16 yards a catch. Yeah. He had 46 receptions. That's more than Deion Kane had. 736 yards. Hunter Renfro had more receptions. Obviously, he's that's kind of what he does a yeah. little bit, but, Renfro. you know... 44 yards for 495 and six touchdowns. Like this is that 2016 unit was a machine, right? It was a machine, and you would have liked to see Deion Kane assert himself even more in that machine. Well, that's offense. what I was saying though. He's coming off the getting suspended in the terrible rookie season. I want to transfer. And that suspension Mama tells led me into spring right. practice and stuff. He exactly. was suspended even more than just those two bowl games. So, I mean, th- there's definitely the negative things that you can point out about Kane, and, and there's definitely concentration issues, and it's 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 just a matter of whether he can pull it all together. And and I can I, I understand the worries, and and my heart wants to go Deion Kane, but my head says I should go Equinemius, you know, mm-hmm. and, and put him ahead of them. But uh, I mean, the the good is just is really good, and those first couple of steps off the line of scrimmage are a doozy, and he's he's got different speeds to his game. He's got little subtle nuances, oh, and yeah. head fakes and hip sinkage, and everything you're looking for from he's a got fluid pieces for wide that. receiver. Six point seven three cone drill tells you some of that too. Exactly, and this dude will go over the middle of the field like a boss. There's no fear there. He'll drop he's got it, a, but. He'll, he might drop it, but it's not because he's afraid of taking the hit. It's that focus. Um, he's got great awareness on the field, and he's got good body control. He can contort to make a catch outside of his frame. He crushes a back shoulder fade. I think he's undergraded after the catch. You don't see a ton of after the catch stuff with him, but then all of a sudden he can take a screen pass to the house for a huge play. Like he's he's pretty lethal in the open field because of that speed. And I just I'm willing to gamble. I'm definitely willing to put him on my team, oh, and, and I, I, the upside is there. I don't mind putting him on my team. I'm just going to take a couple of guys who I know got got into their situation and dominated the way I want to see them dominate and, and took advantage of their situation, and maybe I didn't see Deion Kane quite take advantage of the situation like I'd like to see him take advantage of the situation, but but the ceiling <clears> is <throat> worth the you know some a, a little bit of a later round pick to me. That, right. that could be something really good. I think he could be well, I mentioned, awesome. I meant Jay Wayne says gambling. I mentioned the wide receiver – Average of being picked 10 as wide receiver, so I just sorted it through the, the entire rookie class here and averages out to be pick 30. Um, and it, not a lot of fluctuation in those. You know, you can see the different drafts and the numbers and stuff. Not a ton of fluctuation. So you're talking about a mid-third round pick, which is it's a gamble all day anyway. It's not um, a gamble. I'll take it. For, yeah, no, 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 no. The mid-round third, thir- the middle third round pick on anybody's. You're gambling a, on dart any. Throw. Yeah, you're dart throwing on any right. pick you can. Why not make take in a that stab spot. on this oh, dude? Oh, if you're going to yeah. give me Deion Kane in the third, I'll take that all day long. That's, so that's I said this earlier. Day. I think that based on I hate to me. Based on what I, you see him running around on a on a on a field catching balls and and playing and playing around with the defense, I say that I think that the NFL is going to draft him higher than what the fantasy football world thinks about him right now. But given everything about what Jay Wayne has brought to us on the other side of the lines, outside off the field, it will be very interesting to see what the NFL and the, what a team, what a GM and, right. a, and a coach and, and a, pr- a team president thinks and say, after the interviews. Right. And, 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 and Luckily for him, Deion this was Kane, all freshman. These were exact, all freshman issues. Deion Kane's not the first 
diva right. that no, needed a second no, no. chance. He's not the first diva that needed a third chance, right. you know. So and this dude is an alpha male. Like he's he's a guy that's got handshakes with everybody, and he's he's t- constantly talking and and boosting people up. And maybe he was just showing for the mic'd up little thing yeah. that they put out. But I mean, he seems like he's the alpha. You know, he is that wide receiver attitude of I'm the best, and you know, yeah. number eight's always open, baby. Like right, throw, right. you know. It'll, this is this is another and this is another example of why your it, rookie draft is so much better after the NFL draft because this is the kind of thing where it's get out of here with your pre-draft the, rookie the, draft. The, the, the where where this guy is selected is one of those. That I like to say this a lot. It's must must watch TV. The NFL draft. I can't wait to figure out who decides to either a say Deion Kane's our guy. And we're going to take him higher than people think, or b everybody's like, uh, we talked to this guy and I'm not so sure he's not going to, yeah. you know, his focus, he can't, he only couldn't. takes one though. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm right. highly interested to see where he goes and when he goes like Arizona Cardinals need help. Sure. They do. And th- this is a, this would be a really good pickup. Cowboys for need help. They're I mean, down to a take a guy with places that need help. Pretty mm-hmm. much everybody San is Francisco going to Dallas. Take a shot Cowboys ain't taking Deion Kane. I can tell you that they just got rid of a guy who, Oh, they love them. They love them. They love, love them. Guys. No way. Love them. They're, They're talking about taking Callaway. They're changing it up. Let's let's uh let's wrap this train up and get to ESB. Let's wrap it up we'll, before uh, flexing. Before flexing. <laughs> <laughs> let's take it a break. Hit us up on Twitter if you disagree with any of this stuff we're talking about, or if you agree, be sure to hit subscribe. Blah blah blah. Don't hit me up on Twitter if you disagree, because I don't care. At the <laughs> F- <laughs> At the FF Dynasty. Because I don't care. Leave a comment in the comment section below. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Equinemius St. Brown for your pleasure. <laughs> 